actually back on Terra? We're actually back on Terra. We're actually back on Terra! How absolutely golden. Yes! Gold! Oh, you can't imagine how much I've missed gold! <laughs> Finally home! We haven't been gone for that long, you know. What? We've been gone long enough to fit in a stale road trip, a failed test of breaking and entry, a fratricide, and the procurement of Corvus Corax's eternal animosity! I don't find any enjoyment in you putting it like that. We've been meandering like a quarter charged power lifter in a dumpy warehouse! We have definitely been gone for that long, Magnus! Vulcan almost broke my spine! I don't have a bloody spine, you goldless tosser! Fuck you, Lehman! Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you! Nuts to Lehman! You've got two other brothers to worry about. Your weakness shows. Oh, come on! It's not like I killed, killed Vulcan. He is unkillable, lest you forget. And what makes you so sure he still is? I could sense his regeneration as keenly as my ever-present back pain. He's very much alive, I'm sure of it. Good. What? You thought some figure had gone and stabbed the perpetuality out of him or something? And what if I did? The saying goes, only a Primarch can kill a Primarch, lest you forget. Conrad Kurz was assassinated by a mortal! What? That's entirely relevant. Why would you even mention that? Because it's true! I don't care if it's true, it's not relevant. Being right is always relevant! No, you're completely missing my point. You voice. don't have a point to yes, make! Yes, if I bloody well do! No, you bloody well don't! I say stop! Sad fight. Look! Shut up! I, Magnus, am right. No! You, companion, are wrong. No! And I will now proceed to inform you as to why. No! Vulcan still has his overpowered regenerative abilities. Thus, not even a fellow Primarch can kill him. No! Not me, not Russ, no. not Angron, and not Conrad Kurtz. No. And he tried no. really, really hard No. with a fork. No! In the case of every other Primarch, as far as we know, all of them can be killed by conventional means. Did you, would you make me a sandwich? Yes. Like being assassinated. I say an assassin! So there, I have obliterated your foundation. I am right, you can get off my bright red ass. Oh no, my meager jerk and the legitimate concern is absolutely obliterated by your great stonking nitpick cannon. I'd personally call it an intellectual inferno cannon. Righty ho, use the scribbling arm again then. Hey, Magnus! As the assassin laid into him, Comrade Curtis could have chowed down on some Primark cyanide. You been debunked, mate? How's it feel? How am I debunked? Where in the warp would he find Primark cyanide? I don't know. Pfft. Some factorum milking noxious juices out of Pearl Rubbish GMC. What, deep in the kinky underbelly of Mars? I was gonna say the phallus of Mars works too. Flying bionic fetuses were the Martian Mechanicus' idea for nice window dressing, so I suppose it makes sense. And the entire planet is one big car boot sale. Yeah. Oh, uh, speaking of Mars and boot sales, first off, are we cool now? Alright, great. So, I know we only just returned to Terra, but... Could you run, let's call it an errand for me? A final one? No. What? I can only handle so much slapstick in a century, Magnus. I have a palace to keep. Be seeing you. I haven't even told you the plan yet! I don't give a shit! Departing now! But... Companion! We're going to revive Father! I caught your attention. What is it you want me to do? Tell me immediately. You're not mad anymore? Yes! Yes, you're mad, or yes, you're not mad? Let's go to my office! Okay. I have a plan. One final plan. A plan that shall see the Imperium of 12,000 years ago rise from the carcass that remains. Free from corruption, bureaucracy, and booinged baby meat. This is my office, you know. Companion! Have you ever heard 
of the Proteus Protocol. Only briefly. It's former technology, correct? Oh yes, a mythical one at that. The Proteus Protocol allows for the engrammatic knowledge, personality, will, and memory of any given individual to be transferred into a new body. With it, we could revive Father through a swift and painless mind transplantation! Without him even realizing, we would grant him new flesh, saving him from the Golden Throne, ridding him of his pain and irrationality, bringing him back to the fore of the Imperium where he can actually do some good, lifting mankind into a new age, an age of understanding! All this thanks to me! And you? I'm sorry, Magnus, but I'm doubting the veracity of your ambitions. Is there anything about this protocol you haven't mentioned? Well, uh, the technology is forbidden by Imperial law. But, according to intelligence tripping down the heretical grapevine, the Dark Mechanicum and its myriad of progressive cults... You mean a technophilic demographic? Yeah, those guys. They claim the knowledge behind the Proteus Protocol is stored in secret data vaults in the depths of Mars itself. A Chaos worshipper being a trustworthy source of information is about as probable as their living quarters being tidy. Stop being fussy for just a moment because here comes the clincher. Based on information extracted from some highly classified Mechanicus intel I dug up after we... saved the High Lords. It turns out the Fabricator General himself is making use of this technology to avoid death. The Fabricator General? <laughs> wow, I always did think it was a bit weird that he kept popping back up after inexplicably exploding. Indeed. He is holding on to this technology to rule the Mechanicus eternally. It is corruption at its most quintessential. So your plan is for us to travel to Mars and blackmail the Fabricator General? Not as harebrained as every other one of your plans so far. Which should we leave? Oh, no, no. I won't be going. You'll be going on your own. Okay. Why? <sighs> Look, I need to go check in with Father. For better or for worse, I have to inform him of the Vulcan and Korax situation. Like, tell the truth? Uh, no. I'll tell him we were going to Nocturne to check out that whole artifacts ritual had come to pass, and that it totally kind of did, except not really, and of course that Vulcan accidentally died in an accident when we were there, and also that Corvus Korax was present and is now blaming us for Vulcan's demise. That's... close enough to the truth to confuse me as to why you won't just tell the truth. Because I am not telling that shrieking skeleton in a bag that we are trying to fix the Imperium in his stead. Simple as. Eh, fair. I'm sure he'll be content enough to hear the two other Primarchs re-enter in fold. As content as a prisoner being cast a rasp. Nevertheless, if I'll be one to travel to Mars, off planet, on a political mission, a mission into the depths of Mars itself, a mission where my body tissue is at risk of turning into premiums for sentient slot machines, I will need to bring some choice allies. Time to institute a healthy bonding experience! No! Alright! I will need to get a hodgepodge of different units to get this to work. First, I'll get a squad get of- bikes! No, I don't need bikes. Not taking bikes is a mistake! We do not need bikes for this mission. You always need bikes. We do not need bikes, we need politicians. Why not politicians on bikes? Bikes would make arguing policy any easier. You're arguing with the Adeptus Mechanicus. It literally will. No bikes! I should be starting off with a squad of warriors from the Emissaries and Paratus Shield Coast, the Heralds of the Golden Throne. They are particularly well-read diplomats, having mastered the subtle art of the guilt trip. I thought we were going to discuss the Emperor's affinity with barbecue sauce today, but okay, sorry. My mistake. I'm Robbie Umber. Could I have a word? Captain General! You do not visit very often. What brings you here? I am in need of your warriors, Shield Captain. We are going on a mission. My warriors are always at your command, Captain General. Don't worry about me, though. I could just... Stay here. You're coming too. That is so generous of you. 
That's all good, but this mission might need you to excavate the datascapes of ancient Mars, companion. You'd better bring some custodians specialized in digging holes. I don't exactly have any iron warriors available. Ha! <laughs> that robot digs holes. I but I might have something yes. better. <laughs> the Shadow Keeper's shield was... Ah. They are specialized in safekeeping the secrets buried beneath the Imperial Palace. They guard vaults containing ancient dark tech abominations too dangerous to even comprehend. A perfect match for this mission. underbelly to bewail your crushed heart. What? You know you cannot keep doing this. No! No! I am here for you and your keepers, Lockwarden. And we are here for you, Captain Chen. Stop! That was a strange thing, dude. Not Shannon. But sometimes a breakup is a blessing in disguise. Shut up! Shut up and get in fucking line, Lockwarden. So, politicians and hole diggers. Just need some super anthrax and we got ourselves a hit job. I am also going to need some transports. Bikes. Bikes are not transports. They, by definition, are. They aren't by classification. <laughs> but coroner's grab carriers sure are. One of those should be enough. If the pontoons on that thing were protruding upwards, it'd look like a big boy sausage mobile. Besides that, I'll need tech priests, servitors, and other menials capable of extracting the protocol from the data books. Shouldn't be an issue. This palace is like a thick brush of technophiles and mechadendrites. I might also require some brawn. The datascapes of Mars contain many a mechanical spectre, so coming armed would be wise. You should bring a dreadnought. Okay, not a bad idea. Yeah! Brother Sturto? Brother Dacia? I am in need of your assistance. Really? Really? Come on, lad, you just woke up! Isn't 500 years enough? I need brawn! Brawn! Did somebody say brawn? Brother Centodes? Little Pitten, is that you? It is your Captain General, yes. Mmm, Little Pitten. Okay. It is good to hear your voice. I hadn't realized you were awake, Centodes. My master awakened me! Yeah, yeah, of course he did. Would you like to go on a mission? Finally! My thermic reactor is pulsating with excitement! Alright, good. Come along then. Yes. My cogs must be oiled. Uh, and my locks shall be hydrated. Yeah, yeah, go wash up in the dredge shower. Mmm. My host has been amassed, and we are ready to leave. Whoa! Hold on! Why aren't all of them naked? I'm sorry to report, but not every custodian stopped using their armor. That's... disappointing. Agreed! Despawn defender yours all of you! The emissaries would have stripped if anyone had bothered to tell us to, but no one had the time to do that, apparently. Look, let's be real. Wearing slick, black, gold-trimmed Alaris Terminator armor is just as erogenous as wearing nothing at all. This is fair. You honor us, venerable one. Humongous Terminator daddies. Never applied that inflection to the word daddy again. Oh, Grinch. So, uh, while they stopped preparing, I was considering donning my Captain General's garb to finally escape from this drab, silvery purgatory. But that might take a few extra hours because, honestly, that armor is two sizes bigger than me, so it's a bit of a struggle to crawl into, just so you're aware. No! No! There Please is no time, time to be lost. be lost! I'll help you out. Please, no. Um, 
What was she thinking? This was incredibly unnecessary. Little Teddy, you must start more frequently. I am in no need of constructive criticism. No more useless quibbling Armageddon, companion. Less time playing dress-up is more time spent necromancing father. For terror's sake, part of my armor is still silvery. Did you do that on purpose? No, that's just the malignant powers of Zinch roiling in whatever you wear. What? No worries, leave the armor in a tub of simple green overnight and it should be fine. Oh, brilliant. That's our preferred degreasing brand anyhow. Oil spills are far too abundant in this palace! There is passive aggression in the air! It's not as passive as you'd like to believe, Santonis! Like so much body oil. Also, what is up with these feathers? I surmised that keeping in contact with you might be wise, so I ripped off a part of my being and attached it to your armor. Those feathers contain a small fragment of my psyche. <coughs> Mini Magnus, come forth! <laughs> I'm gross! Whenever you are finished on Mars, just call upon Mini Magnus. Me! He acts as a direct link from me to you, wherever we might be. Whenever you need teleporting back, just speak to the feathers and I shall hear you. Me! Understood. Then, if everyone is ready, send us to Mars. Whip them good, companion. Please send us to fucking Mars already! I want to crawl under dudes with my finger name! <laughs> now that that's underway... Off to see father. <laughs> oh, fuck no! Imperials are so fucking nasty, I swear to the... You know when a body part falls asleep and it feels like said body part is being punctured by a thousand miniature needles in quick succession? Acutely aware. I feel like my eyeballs when I'm staring directly at camera. It is actually quite distressing. Where are those jagged rascals taking the Inquisition again? Have we heard of the Supreme Overlord of Kamora? <laughs> no. Why would we have? Good point. Well, the yeah, the Triumvirate, what we have to call them now, are going to meet up with a Supreme Overlord Vet. And you have spies on the city. Or, well, I say city. More like a sector sized underhive with no gravity. <laughs> Correction. My brother Lehman and the Grey Knight are not to meet this vet. Only walking Vestroyan stereotype, Fyodor Karamata, will. Odd, if you ask me. Fyodor Karamata, Kar Kar the, the Inquisitor? Or like Maxine Lantern, with emphasis on C. Why would this dark Eldar monarch reserve a meeting with a man wearing a potato sack when he has an actual honest to Terran Primark there to deal with? They are Eldar, she and Captain. Naturally, they would assume the unswallowest of the lot would be the figurehead. Do not underestimate the Supreme Overlord, King Thai High. He is definitely aware Fyodor is no more. Wait, K K Kara Crazy Pantsov is dead? Not as much dead as overridden. Who oh, is riding him? No one. He is riding his throne. Oh, that's how he controls the throne. Ah, that makes sense. And is planning your revolting. Do you know what? Your loop battle brain could never grasp my explanation as anything more than a body double entendre. So there is barely a point in trying to describe to you my newfangled bond with the motor's body. You are entirely correct in that assessment. My brain? What? Well, it is normal to- I can sense him. The red one returns to the fold! About damn time. <laughs> the saucy spice boy returns. I summon Prohibition Hammer. Prohibition's only ever expanded that. Father? Son. Brother. Brother. Hot stuff! What? Curtailment. <laughs> Proceed. Father, I have returned. With chicken wings. And I bring news of both stellar and substandard nature. Wait, what? Where the fuck? After that? having been away for so many years, I would not have expected anything less. What? Years? At least two years. What? No! I've been gone for like a month tops! Did you come here to deliver me lies or news, Magnus? What? Uh, well, news, of course! And the first piece of news is that my companion, uh, your caretake. No, uh. Kitten? 
Uh, the Captain General? The Captain General! Yes! Fuck, of course, that's right. Thank you. You? My mind is no fortress. It is an open pasture ravaged by internecine conflict and chicken. What? Duly noted. So, yes, indeed. The Captain General is, unfortunately, not returning any time soon. I am aware. You are... aware? Unsurprising. Why? Why is that unsurprising? He is on Mars now, is he not? What? How do you... Whoa, whoa. Magnus, you are more than aware that Father does not answer questions. Still dating, Rogel. Oh, that is actually unsurprising. But I shall be honest with you, in part because I like your new wings. They complement your color palette. Well, thank you. At least someone around here is capable of a feat such as honesty. You may not remember, but you almost destroyed the palace some time ago. Oh shit, really? Exactly two years ago now. You were very angry. You had to be deprived of your consciousness by the Captain General. And we helped! I even flew with my femurs. <laughs> Don't you know shitty wings? Father refused to help calm you down, so all responsibility lay with the Captain General. I was very busy doing Emperor things. The worst part was that you nearly deconstructed several fabulous buttresses with your big head. Oh shit. But the almost worst part was that while your anger management session was still ongoing, these three racketeers took advantage of the situation. Oh now, racketeers! I'm all implored adorable and be my wingman for the sweet man. They convinced the Captain General to resign from his role as caretaker in exchange for aid in tranquilizing you. In the end, they did not set up fortifications, defied gravity for no reason, and were naked. Okay. They were really bad at helping. Again, unsurprising. You three have always been unswerving in your goal to make your Captain General feel like Grox Manure. You remind me of my brothers. The asshole ones. Oh, oh, that's... Oh. Holy shit, where did this word shift pile of corpses come from? I suspect foul play. <laughs> what did this one happen? I am funny. P please, my glorious overlord. You must understand that we only did this because we... We, we wanted our chance to bask in the sun. That is your being. Kitten has spent centuries tending to you, while our existences have been reserved for shooting rats and pressing benches. We needed reinvigoration. We needed to live again. And we can only truly live by your side. Please, my lord, do not think ill of us for this. I beg of you. I do not. Thank you. In fact, I expected you to do this. You, you, you did? Oh, no. I did. I also expected Magnus to pick up the broken remains of the sun cat after the fact. Um. <laughs> God, it's this again. What? The sulfuric fuse this discussion is producing burns my brain. Magnus, shield captain, have you ever played a game of regicide? Obviously. No, I'm not a nerd, sorry. Imagine your lives as inert pieces on a regicide board. Now imagine Father playing a game of regicide in order to fulfill his own goals. I hope you can follow this comparison, but I understand if you do not, for it is very esoteric. Uh... Well, baby's first metaphor. I am not an infant. I am many years old. So, you expected me to take the Captain General along on some space adventures then? Do I even need to tell you what we've been up to, or did you imprint the ideas I've been having on my mind with some of your definitely not deity-like powers. Tell me anyway. I might be surprised by your definitely not puppet-like autonomy. <sighs> As if I wasn't dangling by threads all along. Like a clown. <laughs> Did not mean to ruffle your feathers. You are insufferably cocky. So are you. But literally... <laughs> ha, that is funny. Magnus has the properties of a Quiet! No. No. Yes! Fuck you, Dawn! I'm telling you about a journey now! Tell us of the plans you have hatched. And... Okay. I first planned on using my newfound companion to remove the corruption at the heart of the Imperium by slaughtering the High Lords. Much like the Grand Master of the Officio Sassnorn in the 32nd millennium. That was quite inspirational. And you failed. Yes! Obviously! 
As it turned out, they were all shape-shifting Xenos infiltrating the highest command in the Imperium. How convenient. Now hold on for just a moment. Do you mean you saved the Imperium? Well, technically, but not in the way we intended. After that, we went to Nocturne as I wanted to harness the power of one of Vulcan's most powerful doomsday machines. The Engine of Woes! And you failed. Yes, I did! I failed! Turns out, Vulcan was alive! Oh, 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 oh. Vulcan has returned? Yes! And so has Corvus Corax, because he had apparently made a nest inside the Engine of Woes, like some shaggy plate-clad pelican! Corvus too? Are you sure you want to go compare people to birds right now? Yes! And now Corvus hates me, because he saw me as I accidentally, ACCIDENTALLY, killed Vulcan with the Engine of Woes because Vulcan was breaking my spine! One. Corvus already hated you, too. You do not have a spine. Fuck you, Lehman! Calm down, brother. You sound like a screaming rat. Tell us more instead. Fine, fine, I will. Vulcan and Korax are on their way here now. Vulcan regenerated, obviously. This is fortunate. The last report regarding Vulcan's fate I have ever received was during the War of the Beast. He fought the most substantially sized orcs who have ever faced the Imperium. The eponymous, the Beast. Strange name for an orc. Usually, when orcs actually have names, the names are only there to highlight their identity as the utter apex of their rickety garbage fraternity. Like, for instance, Big Boss Gold Low Charisita. Or War Boss Thigh Master. Or Book Bread Wolf Smasher. Or Bad Stitch Red Thurster. Or Gash Smash Weed Stash of Banana Slam Man Tabram. Or Big Green. No, I swear that one is completely real. I was reading a book called Death World about the Katachan jungle fighters. Check page 19 of that book. It is right there, I promise. You cannot read. You keep forgetting this. My glorious overlord, I am determined to learn. I prefer the beast as a name. For the beast was just that. A beast. Please do inform me more thoroughly of Vulcan's reappearance in the 32nd millennium. I will do this. In the 32nd millennium, Vulcan existed. During that time, an apocalyptic orc war made an effort to fight every single life form in the galaxy. And they succeeded. Unfortunately for the orcs, this also meant attacking the world of Caldera, a planet which Vulcan had insisted upon defending with his life. Caldera? That rings familiar. Was it not a uh, world that Vulcan, named after he, Ferris, and Mortarion, last of which had previously fallen in stairs, <laughs> had conquered together as part of the 154th Expeditionary Fleet? Yes, but first he lit it on fire. Oh, well, shit. That's not answering the horse straight out of the box or anything. <laughs> the human tribes upon the planet had come to worship Eldar Exodites as their saviors, a wretched behavior even he yeah. could not allow. Ah. Thusly, Vulcan had the planet turned into a Promethean sun. Title drop! Who is this normal and why did you let him in? After setting the planet on fire, killing all its inhabitants, Vulcan swore to protect the world with the same ferocity as he would his own homeworld. Preserving a world of charred corpses entirely out of fuel is a very Vulcan thing to do. When the orcs attacked it 1500 years later, Vulcan returned to the planet to uphold his vow. And as Vulcan was slain, the orcs invading Caldera, the Inquisition found out about his pre-emergence. Did they confuse him for a massive demon and virus bomb the planet? No. They attempted to force him into leading the Imperium. It is always one or the other. After the orc threat was abolished on Caldera, Vulcan joined the Imperium's forces led by an Imperial Fist, one of my sons, going by the wall name of Slaughter. Amazing name, it's all action hero he was. I am Slaughter, greatest hero of them all! This is true, but we are speaking of Vulcan now. Recognizing the great beast as the war boss of this entire operation, Vulcan decided to mount an assault upon its headquarters, a massive temple war machine stationed upon the planet of Ulanor. Oh wow, Ulanor, huh? Seems like the Orcs Boars weren't properly disposed of. 
really proves that the orc genome can make it through anything, even toxic emissions from absolutely fucking atrocious family reunions, and not even Vulcan could quite regenerate from those. I suppose the great beast was a sort of descendant of that one war boss that horse threw from a tower. Remember that? Truly an inspiring moment. Stop distracting me and I shall conclude the tale of Vulcan's fate. Please do, you fetid white-haired little goblin. Vulcan faced the beast alone, but even with Vulcan's unquestionably extensive muscles, he was unable to kill it. They were too evenly matched. Ultimately, Vulcan made a desperate attempt to rid the galaxy of this green menace. He sacrificed himself by tackling the beast into the Temple Machine's power generators, detonating them, shattering the War Machine in its entirety, and saving the Imperium from one substantially sized issue. For a time. Then it came back. And there were five others. The War of the Beast was weird. This... Wow, yes. This does make an un comfortable amount of sense. The power generators and orc war machines tend to run on pure war powers. <laughs> war power, what a name. This would mean that Vulcan bathed his being utterly in the collective psyches of billions of orcs. Evidently, upon his recent return, the results have been, uh... Well, when I last met Vulcan, I could not help but notice that he wasn't quite the same. I mean, of course, none of us are the same. I am still me. But he's a special case. My daily five-minute mirror gazing reinforces this. What do you mean, Magnus? I don't mean to worry you. Saying that amplifies my worry. Remember how soul fusion is a thing that can occur? Yes. <laughs> Sounds gross. Of course I remember, you should. See, I think part of the orc just of consciousness might have fused with Vulcan's mind. He has these little fits, you see. So my son is now half orc. Uh, yes. Fan fucking tastic. One boy is half demon and one half orc. What an absolutely horrid way to get an extended family. By my graciously slathered foreskin, our brothers-in-law are orcs. Ah, uh, would, would you imply that primarchs are our brothers? Uh, stepbrothers, maybe? The whole concept of family is losing its appeal by the second. Hmm. Hey Magnus, you ever heard of Winces? Too late. Oh no. Say, Magnus, hypothetically, if you and Vulcan were to fuse, would I get one whole son and one absolute abomination? No, I think we'd become one fourth calculated, one fourth cuddly, and two fourths bane of all spines. My spine has shattered upon the very concept. Magnus, you must tell us of Corvus now. I have not much to tell, in all honesty. He has a really depressing beard, and I'm fairly certain he's been stuck inside the Engine of Woes for centuries. He probably passed the time writing heavy-handed poetry about... birds and... super death birds. This... sounds accurate. Yes, it does. Despite the fancy new curse words Corvus will no doubt shower me in, it is genuinely good to hear of their return. I expect them home by next month. So... In five years real time. I am planning on getting him a chronometer for his birthday. He has a birthday? Now there is only one question left to be answered. Remember how we spoke about your talent for finding failure earlier? I unfortunately remember. Follow up question to that would be. Exactly what kind of mission have you set the flex and cylinder up to horribly fail at? Would you like to take a break? Yes! Good. We will reconvene in 84 years. Why? Hey, uh, I know we're kind of past it now, but should we have mentioned how the beast held Terra at gunpoint with a weaponized mover? No. No, 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 no. No. We have sandwiches. That is discounts! Scones are sandwiches! No! They are cakes! No! You don't put butter and cheese on cakes! You are supposed to put clotted cream and jam on top! Scones are not cakes! Cakes are supposed to be sweet! Force Commander! Scones are sweet! No! You do not use sugar to bake scones! Gah! 
You dare? Stones are sandwich breads. Stones are not fucking bread. Yes, they are made of bread. You dare? You must put a stop to these giant tales to see what the true and faithful are made of. You will stop one way or the other. No. <laughs>